Hi, my name is Clinical Clarnas and you're watching the video Alphabet Patterns, Clinical Characteristics. In this video, we'll discuss the various characteristics that uh, we expect in patients who are diagnosed with an alphabet pattern. And these will refer to AV patterns and also to other alphabet patterns that we haven't yet discussed in this subject. Uh, this video will be followed with a video on clinical investigations utilised in assessing a patient with an alphabet pattern. So uh, this video will specifically focus only on what we expect to see of the deviation when we're going to diagnose an alphabet pattern. Okay, so you're aware that an alphabet pattern occurs when there is a significant change to the horizontal component of a deviation from primary position uh, to up and down gaze. And in particular, we're interested in the difference between up and down gaze. If we have a look over to the image to the right, we can see that this child in prior position has a left exotropia. Now, when the child looks up, we clearly see an increase in this exotropia. And when the child looks down, there is a decrease in the exotropia. And it might be possible that is actually aligned in that position. We would, have, we would have to perform a cover test to determine that. Now, what we see here is a change in the horizontal deviation between those three positions. And in particular, like I said, we're interested in comparing the up gaze to the down gaze. And when you do that, you can clearly see a V pattern. We're getting an exo deviation up gaze, and we've got relatively aligned eyes in down gaze what creates a V pattern. An alphabet pattern may present in a patient with concomitant strabismus, so the types of deviations we learned about last semester, an infantile ET, a divergence excess XT, some of these patients may also have an A or V pattern. But they can also occur in patients with paralytic strabismus or mechanical restrictions. And so we focus on it in this particular subject in terms of what is the etiology uh, primarily, what are the clinical characteristics, how do we diagnose it, and how do we manage a patient with an alphabet pattern. These topics will come up in the subsequent videos. Let's start off with AV patterns, which you're familiar with. So where we have an AV pattern, not only will we classify the patient as having an AV pattern, but we will go to the extent of classifying the patient as having a V-EZO, V-EXO, an A-EZO or an A-EXO. The way we determine whether it's a V or an A, uh, sorry, a V-EZO or a V-EXO, for instance, is the deviation in primary position. So if we have a look here again at the child to the right, we can see that there is an EXO deviation in primary. So whatever pattern we find, whether it's an A or V, will then be subclassified as the pattern plus the deviation in primary. So we said earlier that this patient has a V pattern. We see that in primary position, it is an exo deviation. The exo is increasing in up gaze and decreasing in down gaze. And as such, this patient is classified as having a V exo. If there is no deviation in prior position, but you note an AV pattern because there is a difference in the horizontal deviation between up and down gaze, then we can only comment that there is an AV pattern and we won't go to the extent of a further subclassification. Now here we have um, two images, one of a patient with a VEZO and one with a patient with a VXO. If we start off with the VEZO to the left here, what we can see is that in prior position, we have a patient who has an EZO, the ESO increases in down gaze and decreases in up gaze. And so what we eventually see is what appears to be a pattern that is a V pattern. And because we start off with an ESO in primary, we classify this as a V ESO. Here to the right, we have a patient with a VXO. Uh, in this instance, we have a patient in primary position with an exotropia. The exotropia is larger in up gaze and smaller in down gaze. So the pattern that appears to be here is a VXO. Here we have nine positions of gaze of the patient that we saw a moment ago in the previous slides. And here I'm reiterating that all we're interested in, even though you've assessed the patient in nine positions of gaze, what we're interested in is simply primary position 
up gaze and down gaze, the horizontal deviation, and this patient has a VXO. The nine positions of gaze will assist us to determine perhaps the etiology of the V pattern, but we'll come to this in a later video. Okay, uh, here we now have our A patterns and in the image to the left, an A ESO. And what we can see again, ESO in primary, the ESO is getting larger in up gaze, smaller in down gaze, and therefore we have an A ESO pattern. To the right, we have an EXO in primary, the EXO is smaller in up gaze, larger in down gaze, and we end up having what appears to be an A pattern, EXO. Okay, I've given you here another patient with a known uh, in nine positions of gaze. Again, our primary interest is looking at the deviation in primary, up gaze and down gaze. We can clearly see an a right esotropia here in primary position. This increases um, to an extent in up gaze and certainly decreases in down gaze. And if we were to measure the deviation in this position and compare it to this position, we would end up classifying this patient as having an A pattern. The fact that they began with an ESO in primary classifies this patient as an A esotropia. Now there are modifications to the AV patterns. The AV patterns are the most common and I'll show you this in a moment in terms of prevalence, but there are other patterns that you may see in clinic. These are generally the X, the diamond, the Y and the lambda pattern. So the pattern itself represents the change in the deviation. So if we look at the X uh, pattern, Given the way the letter X is represented, what we're expecting is some increase in the divergence of the eyes in up gaze and also an increase in divergence in down gaze. In the diamond pattern, we're expecting a relative convergence up and down. In the Y, we're expecting little or no change between primary and down, but some um, relative divergence in up. And with the lambda, we're expecting the opposite. We're expecting relative divergence from primary to down gaze, but little change from primary to up gaze. Let's have a look at these in some schematic diagrams. The first here, I have an X pattern in primary position. In primary position here, we have little deviation. We'd have to do a cover test to confirm, but what we do see is relative divergence in up gaze and relative divergence in down gaze. And what's produced from this is an X pattern. Okay, over here, we have again, eyes that look relatively aligned. Uh, we'd have to do a cover test to determine if there's anything in primary. But up here, we see relative convergence and in down gaze, we see relative uh, convergence. And what we appear to have is a diamond pattern. Okay, the Y and the Lambda, let's start off with the Y. Here, we have um, relatively aligned eyes. There is little change in down gaze but in up gaze we get relative divergence. So what's appearing to be here is a Y pattern. And the lambda is the opposite. No change between primary and up gaze or very little. And then we have a relative divergence in down gaze, in which case we have a lambda pattern. Now in these particular examples, I've given you um, patients where, or a schematic diagram of where in primary position there isn't uh, much of a deviation. This may not happen in clinic. You may have a deviation in primary. What we're comparing is the deviation in primary down and up gaze and seeing what sort of change we're having. So say for instance, for the Y pattern, the patient was esotropic here by five diopters and esotropic in down gaze by five diopters. We're also seeing no change in the ESO here, but then we're seeing a relative divergence in up gaze. In that instance, you could actually indicate that the patient has a Y ESO as well, given that in primary position, what you had is an ESO. Okay, here we have a patient in nine positions of gaze who has an X pattern. So if we take a look at her in primary position, we can see that she has a large XO deviation. And in up gaze, again, she has a large XO deviation. And in down gaze, she has a large XO deviation. Now, upon looking at her, it isn't um, immediately obvious in terms of whether she has an X pattern or not. But here we have the values. She has a 50 diopter XT in primary that increases to 80 in up and 75 in down. So we have here a significant increase in the XO in up gaze and in down gaze from primary. And in this instance, this patient gets classified as having an X pattern. Now here we have a patient with a Y pattern. 
And what we can see here is that there's little deviation in prime position and little deviation in down gaze. Maybe a slight exo here. Again, a cover test will assist in, in determining this. But there is very little difference between the deviation in primary and um, down gaze to be confirmed by PCT. But what we certainly see is that when the patient looks in up gaze, we have a left exotropia. And what we've got here is what's produced or what we have here is now a Y pattern. A patient has little difference between primary and down, but a large increase in up gaze. So what we can see here is that in order for us to make a diagnosis of an alphabet pattern, whether it be an A or V or a X or diamond, for instance, what we need is an assessment in primary position, up gaze and down gaze. Now we'll need to compare up and down gaze in terms of the deviation, but also take into consideration that primary position to assist in the further subclassification of the patient as to whether it's an A or V ESO exo, and then also as to whether it is more of a diamond Y, X, etc. pattern rather than an AV. Specifically related to AV patterns, I want to reiterate that in order for you to classify a patient as having a V pattern, because V patterns are physiological, you will need a difference of at least 15 diopters between up gaze and down gaze in terms of the horizontal deviation. Now for the A pattern, the difference need only be 10 diopters between up and down gaze. Now earlier I mentioned to you that AV patterns are the most common alphabet patterns and here I've given you a, uh, an excerpt from the Von Norden and Campos uh, textbook and we can see here that 64% of patients will have a V pattern as compared to 36% of patients having an A pattern. There are other um, studies that have looked at prevalence of AV patterns and again these have found similar results. They, they do vary between studies but generally V patterns are considered to, to be the most common alphabet pattern. Um, so prevalence Depending on um, the study, uh, it's indicated to, um, to be between 12.5% to 50% of patients uh, may have an alphabet pattern or one in five patients with strabismus will have a um, AV pattern. So in summary, the alphabet pattern is um, diagnosed primarily by comparing the horizontal deviation between up gaze and down gaze. And we also need to consider the primary deviation to further subclassify the patient's A or V pattern or to determine if indeed it's not an AV pattern and it's a Y, X, diamond or lambda pattern instead. Okay, this brings us to the conclusion of this video. Thank you for watching.